Hi everyone, welcome back to the wonderful world of carpet cleaning again. It's Franco from Fresh Air Carpet Cleaning. And this week we're gonna discuss a little bit about the different styles of carpet cleaning. What there are and what you might want to expect from each different one, because there are quite a few different things we can go by. So sit back, have a listen, and let's go through it all. Okay, here we go. We're back here again, and we're speaking with the inimitable Michael Worthington. <laughs> How are you, Franco? Good, mate. Yourself? I'm very good, thanks. Geez, what a start to the year it has been. It's been a rather tumultuous start around Australia, that's for sure. I know. We've got fires everywhere and... Floods now as well, and oh my God, I hope we don't get the famine, though. No. No, <laughs> no we'll get rid of that one. But it seems to be a lot of people, I mean, the school holidays are over and a lot of people are now starting to look at yep. their carpets and saying, you know, we might get the carpets clean, but there's quite a few people going, there seems to be more to this carpet cleaning than meets the eye. And now they're- Yeah, well, it's, it's not just that. It's not so much that it's just not more that meets the eye. If people don't, aren't aware that there are actual options. Mm. And the problem is a lot of people that are out there in the carpet cleaning fraternity are one trick ponies. They'll do one style of carpet cleaning and that's what they do and that's all they know. So if I'm a, if I'm a carpet cleaner who specializes in that dry carpet cleaning method and that's all I do, they mm -hmm. kind of go, it suits everything. Correct. But it's not. But that's totally incorrect. And I mean that like, I mean that in absolutely every way, in the physical sense, the chemistry sense, everything, it is actually uh, inadvisable to do it on certain styles of carpet. And yet mm. they always say, yeah, no worries, I'll go and do it, um, and end up with a problem on their hands. Yeah, and I've seen the other ones, they say, well, we use the hot water extraction method, but as you said yourself, there's certain carpets even that doesn't work for. Yeah, look, it, it will work. That's probably, as far as the physical sense go, the least damaging, right. um, but it, it can damage in other, other ways. It won't actually hurt the fibre, but there's mm. other things that can happen from excess moisture. And it's a matter of knowing how to do the job properly. Um, but I mean, you know, we had a, 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 an instance uh, just a few months ago where I got called in an inspection in a property where someone had done what they called a low moisture system, which is a, 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 an encapsulation carpet cleaning, but they'd use inappropriate uh, brushes on their machine. And it was what we call a staple fibre. It was an island carpet synthetic, which normally mm. pretty bulletproof, but this one had been made as a staple fibre. So it was all short lengths of fibre made to imitate wool yeah. and then spun together into a yarn. But the problem with that is when they're not continuous filament, like synthetic yarns are made, they come out of a machine, they're basically like a, out of a shower head, it comes out in a steady, long, continuous filament. Okay. But when they're chopped up into short sections to imitate wool, to make it look more like wool, what happens is coming across with an aggressive machine, uh, an aggressive uh, medium of scrubbing the carpet, because that's what you need for encapsulation for it to work, you need yeah. the agitation, but it's grabbed these fibres and it's pulled them and it just went to this hairy mess they got called up, obviously, and they, they, yeah, they, they, okay. there was a complaint put in. So what did they come back and do? The same thing again, because they're a one-trick pony. Oh, no. And they just I've, made it worse. That resulted in a complete uh, and a uh, whole house full of carpet replaced. I shouldn't smile, but I was a young apprentice once. Wait, once. And <laughs> really? And you I went you to, were young? Yeah, and I went to drill a <laughs> hole in carpet. You know, oh, yeah, that's going to do it. Yeah. And when you said about the yarn gets, yes. Yep. And the drill caught us the length of this yarn and went zoom. Yep. <laughs> and luckily, there was someone like you on the scene who actually managed to stitch it all back oh, in for me. lucky boy. Lucky I boy. I was. Yeah. I was. Yeah, there's a lot of people a few beers, that one. I'll bet. <laughs> <laughs> and a bit of embarrassment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, so what are the, the methods? Because there's several different methods for carpet yeah, so look, under, under the Australian standards, there's actually six recognised methods. Okay. So we start off with absorbent compound. Now that one there is actually the only one where you can say, absolutely, it's dry by the time you fish, finished. Oh. Yeah. So it's a okay. great maintenance method. It's not a great cleaning method. And it has mm. its place, um, yeah. but it's not something that would get used too often. And mm. it's more in a commercial sphere than it would be in a domestic sphere, for instance. Um, then uh, after that, we uh, have the old, um, what we call a rotary shampoo, which the redevelopment of that, which is a very different technology, is encapsulation. So it's delivered in pretty much the same way. But right. the chemistry is poles apart. So I remember everybody used to say, 
or a lot of people still say, don't get your carpets clean, they'll get dirty, it'll wreck them, blah, blah, blah. This, that's because of the residues that those old shampoos used to leave. Mm. So now the encapsulation residues are actually what we call a, a positive residue rather than negative that the old shampoos used to be. So they're positive in the sense they're designed to stay in the carpet and they just don't resoil. They actually work really, really well. Oh, and particularly right. in, a, in a commercial scene, once again, where you need something that's going to dry off fairly quickly, yep. but leave a good, clean result that's going to stay clean for a mm. good period of time, encapsulation is an answer to your prayers. Um, and even in, in, in the domestic mm. sphere, it has applications in, at times as well. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's those come a couple of different ones that are there already gives us a, a bit of scope for different sorts of problems we might have. Yeah, someone might ask about that, that you know, because everyone's pretty conscious of chemicals these days. Absolutely. And this is leaving a residue in the in the carpet. Correct. What about the toddlers crawling over the carpet? What kind of a residue is this? Okay, so it's a fairly brittle crystalline residue. And the idea is that you, you leave it there till it's dry and then you vacuum it, vacuum it out. Okay, so okay. It, there's, if you want to put it that way, there's no real cleaning happening at the time because as the name suggests, it encapsulates. So the agitation strips the soil off the fibre yeah. and it encapsulates it in this polymer and it also encapsulates the fibres. So as it dries out, this stuff just, they can't meet, they can't stick together. And because it's quite brittle, you give it a run with a vacuum cleaner, even a yeah. standard vacuum cleaner, yeah. and off she comes. So oh, it works yeah. really well in, in that regard and people sort of don't understand that it does work, yeah. and there's a lot of uh, um, people say, "Oh, look, it's just no, it's rubbish." And I'm yeah. not talking about professional carpet cleaners; it's just rubbish, and they'll poo-poo it all. But it does have its place, and it does work real well when it's used in the right way. So, what you're saying is then that so it's encapsulated, so the dirt gets trapped in these in these crystal type molecules. Yep. And then, because it's drying, it doesn't stick to the fibres. When you would come across with a professional vacuum cleaner it can extract those crystals out of the carpet. Even without a professional vacuum cleaner. That's the beauty oh. of this. It doesn't have to be a professional. Obviously, the, the better the vacuum cleaner, the better result. Mm. But if it doesn't come out the first time, you saw it second time or third time or fourth time, it comes out. And is that why they start looking cleaner longer? Because you're Correct. continually pulling this stuff out. Yeah, so it's, it's quite funny because, as I said, it's that crystalline structure. When it dries out, it's crystalline. Mm. And what do crystals do? They shine. Yes. So it gives a fantastic result. It's a bit of a false result if you want to look at it that way. It's, <laughs> a, bit it's of smoke a and mirrors, smoke yeah. and mirrors, exactly. <laughs> um, but it does have a really clean appearance once it's finished. And it will look oh. better as it dries out and it'll look better again after you vacuum it. Wow. And normally for the first few times after you vacuum it, the look of it actually gets better and better. Whereas mm. hot water extraction doesn't look quite as good at the start. It's great, don't get me wrong, it's the best yeah. form of cleaning, but it doesn't look quite as good. Right. And then we'll start to sort of decline straight away, whereas encapsulation works in a very different way. So if, if we're looking oh. for a visual result, and this is why I'm saying, what, what are you looking for? Like if it was a presentation for a home open and house of sale, guess what? Encapsulation could be, actually be your friend. Wow. Yeah. Or it's coming up to where someone's birthday party or a function, you've got a few relatives coming over. You want to get, impress them? Yeah. Get that done. Well, yeah, look at that's your carpets. right. Yeah. They'll be asking if you've got new carpets. Yeah, so they're, they're the first yeah. couple of ones that we're looking at. Another one we look at that everybody talk, knows about dry cleaning. Mm. You know, there's franchise, franchises out yep. there that do dry cleaning. It's not dry. Guess what? They use water. They use detergents. They use the same as we do in very small amounts. Okay, so what they're normally yeah. doing is they're either spraying a, a certain amount of product onto a, onto a carpet or mm. they're soaking a pad in it and then running that over the carpet. Right. So it's really only tip cleaning. So it's the surface only. It is a maintenance method. It's not restorative in any way, shape or form. It was really designed for, once again, commercial application when they wanted to turn over something really fast. Yeah. It takes 30 minutes to an hour to dry. That's its advantage. Mm. That's it. That's its only advantage. Wow. So like if I was in a commercial premise and say it's in between leases, because you do a lot of work for property managers, Correct. and in between leasing, they said, look, we are just got to get this done because we've got people coming through in a couple of hours. You can run that through make it look clean because it's just a surface. But it, it won't actually be clean. It, it, yeah. Yeah. And especially if you've got heavy soiling or staining on that sort of, uh, with that sort of style of cleaning, it's not going to work. It's just going to come straight back. Well, it's or... not even getting rid of it in the first place. Oh, that's really? the problem. Yeah. I mean, anything that's deep set into the carpet, if it's sunk into the carpet, how is a tip cleaning with process so going to get even... down into it? So it, it is purely a maintenance method. And yeah. when you look at the standard, it'll also tell you that for every three times you do that form of cleaning, 
you have to do a hot water extraction. Why? Because of what it leaves behind. That's uh, where it becomes an issue. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it has its place. Once mm. again, everything has its place. So it all work to a certain degree. But is mm. it the best for what your application is? You did mention at the beginning, you were talking about something about uh, this low moisture in shampoos. What, what is that? I mean, I get this visualization of the can from the local shop and you spray it and scrub it in. And <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, there actually is another system called the dry foam system. Oh, and okay. that's pretty much what it is. And with that, it's using a foam, and it's a bit like a shaving foam, if you like, in, the, in its consistency. So yeah. it's what we call a mechanically stable foam, and it will just sit there for, for quite some time before it starts to break down. But with that, the foam is applied to the carpet, it's then brushed into the carpet and vacuumed out all the same process. So once again, it's a fairly low moisture. Oh. Okay, so all of these ones we're going through are all your low moisture ones at the moment. How, how effective is that one? Um, I'm not on about the can Look, it's the local reasonably but... effective. It's reasonably, but once again, how's it going to deal with real large spills? If you've spilled a can of Coke or something on the carpet, how is it going to come out? Okay. Yeah. So there these is... are all maintenance methods. There is one that you talked about. I know on one of the other shelves, I'm talking about the cans from the supermarket, and you said it's just a crystal. So when it's actually over, it looks shiny. Mm -hmm. There's actually not much cleaning going on. When no. You... <laughs> <laughs> it, just, it just dazzles you because all you see is crystals. Yes, yeah, yeah. Although with that one there, it actually made it look like it was bleached. It was dazzling that much. So yeah, uh, that was not quite uh, quite the, uh, the, uh, the end result the, the person so, was looking for. So you've got to be really careful oh, when you get absolutely, hold of. absolutely. And, and the thing is, at the end of the day, you've got to know how to use it. Yeah. yeah, and I suppose in, in, when it comes to your home, especially your home and you spent all, because carpets are expensive, so I looked the other day for our place and it's like, I think we might make these last a bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So what other methods are there, frankly? You said there okay, so that's, that's the first five mm. we looked at, the absorbent compound, which is literally just a, a, a powder that is applied to the carpet and rubbed in the carpet. It's either going to be solvent-based or a water-based detergent. Mm. Yeah. There's actually in this powder, which is like a uh, normally it's corn husk, it's ground out really fine. So it's right. put into the carpet, it's agitated through. Once again, for the agitation, they release the soil into the powder. Yeah. And then that takes, depending on which system it is, between 15 to 30 minutes to dry off. And then you vacuum it. It's a perfectly dry carpet. Hmm. And it's had a bit of cleaning power with, uh, with associated with it. So that's your first one. Um, the second one that we, we were talking about was your what we call low moisture or LM cleaning, which is your encapsulation. Yeah. Um, then you, there's also your VLM, very low moisture, which is what they call dry cleaning. Yeah. And there's a dry foam shampoo as well. Now, dry foam shampoo is not that popular around the place because it takes a specific type of machine. So there's another, you know, five or six thousand dollars out your back pocket just just <laughs> to have this machine around for when you need it. So not many people do it. Is there any advantage to it? Does it it's fast to dry. Oh, is that it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's, that's the only real advantage to it. It has that little bit of extra extraction happening because there's a vacuum involved with it as well. But not once again, it's not really getting deep enough down into the mm. fibre to really call it a restoration method. There's one thing that with your business, because apart from the carpets, you actually do the upholstery yes. as well. Correct. It, it's, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking now you've got these low moisture things. Is it a very similar system or system? Oh, absolutely. We're using, we're using the same machinery. Really? Okay. It's just different hand tools that we use. Ah. Okay. okay. So, it's with the, and it's, look, it's still the same sort of thing. You still have to identify the type of fiber that you're dealing with. You've got to identify what kind of aggression it can take as far as your agitation can go, what kind of chemistry can it handle. It all mm. becomes part and parcel of whichever system that you're using. And even we're doing tile cleaning. You yes. have to pre-identify the tile you're using to make sure you're using the correct chemistry that's not going to damage it. Okay, I had a, a, an instance with that just a couple of months ago where someone um, had a, a professional tile cleaner come in and he used an incorrect um, product on there and there's a $13,000 claim because he's got to redo her whole bathroom. Yeah. Really? Yeah, just from someone using the incorrect chemistry on what the What did it do? Did it damage the tile? Did it damage the, the tile. Ground, so? It hey. damaged the tile. Actually yeah. damaged the tile. Absolutely itself. damaged the tile, yeah. Oh. He used an acid on it. He didn't dilute it. <gasps> that was just, you know, he could have got away with it if he had diluted it, but he didn't dilute it, put it straight on the tile, and it took, etched the, uh, the gloss off the tile. And they looked shocking. Absolutely shocking. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, once again, it's pre-identification to make sure that you are getting the, the right sorts of equipment onto it, the right sorts of chemistry onto it. And that applies also to the next one we're going to talk about, which is your hot water extraction. Now yes. that's one that's going to be capable of causing the most water-related damage. Because I, I have heard people, they've had their carpets cleaned, yep. and they're saying, look, it, it's, it's been three or four days, but it's still a bit damp. 
And you're going, uh -uh. Oh, I'm hitting panic button right about then because look, <laughs> honestly, if it stays wet for more than 48 hours, there's mm. every chance in the world that you're starting to get mold developing on the back of the carpet. It's not mm. supposed to get that wet. When we clean, we're cleaning the face yarns. We're not cleaning the back of it because how do you pull moisture out of the back of a carpet? Yeah. You think about it, if you're a standard tufted carpet, what you have is the face yarns you can see, which are stitched into a, what we call a primary backing, which is normally polypropylene. Mm. Then there's this layer, a layer of glue and a secondary backing is attached to that. So moisture can seep through there, but we're using a vacuum system to try and pull it out. How are we supposed to pull out of those three layers? Mm. We can't, not effectively anyway. There are tools that can do it, yep. but they're a dedicated tool to do a spot at a time. We can't clean that way. No. So if we're getting water through to the back, we're damaging. So even though it says hot water, it's not like it's getting saturated. No, it's, it's not getting saturated. So when you look at the machine itself, it's literally, it's inject and extract. In more it, 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 it's there for a fraction of a second. So it doesn't get the chance to go right through. Wow. Okay, I mean, we apply a pre-spray and, and we don't apply too much, don't mm. over-apply. And then as I said, then we're doing our correct flushing. If the machinery is working correctly, and we're using it correctly, we won't overwet the carpet. Mm. But if you miss out any sort of step along the way, like people have portable machines and they do a single stroke and they expect that the portable machine will have enough power to put all the moisture out it needs to. Guess what? It doesn't. It doesn't. Okay, once again, standard says one wet stroke, three dry strokes. So you've got to make sure you're drying the carpet enough to leave it in a state that's suitable for it. So really it should be kind of just a little bit damp. It feel damp. should feel damp. Okay, yeah. I've been to houses where people have said it was squelching. Like literally, the water was coming up between their toes, God, which is not a good look. <laughs> so, no, yeah, you know, that, that was someone doing their job incorrectly. You must have a fair bit of power in that machine you got in the back of the truck. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, there's only so much power you can get out of a power point. Yeah. Okay, so we've got 240 volt and mm -hmm. we've got, uh, uh, you know, your, your, your 10 amp power draw and that's it. That's all you're going to get. So... Um, look, I've got a portable machine as well that actually runs off two power leads, so I can double that. It right. still doesn't have enough power or grunt to match the truck mount in any way, shape or form. The truck mount machine is, uh, you know, in, in, instead of running off something like that machine's a, a 5,000 watt max, okay? We're, we're talking something that is a 30 horsepower, which works out to what, around about 20 something kilowatts. Right. So it's... 5,000 watt to 24,000 kilowatts. Mm. Yeah, there's a little bit of difference. A bit of difference. <laughs> so yeah, we can actually get a, a, a much bigger vacuum pump on there. I mean, you know, yeah. just just the vacuum pump, this big solid lump of metal. Yeah. With you know, with uh, with mine's only not even that big. You can't get bigger bigger ones, but it's got three inch ports on it. Yeah. So a three inch port's going to flow a lot of air. Yeah. Okay. Much more air than any of the leadership machines can. So, so it just gets the result. So that's why they've got truck mounted stuff, purely the size and the power they can generate. Yeah. So they can actually get a lot more heat because the heat helps. I was going to say soil about off. the heat. Yep. Yep. Okay. That's, that's where the main advantage with your hot water extraction is. As I said, hot water. The other ones can't supply the heat. Yes. Uh, when it comes to your, the, the, the dirt that you see in the carpet, we've got three different types of dirt. We've got a dry soil. Mm. We got your water soluble soils and you got your oily soils. Now your dry soils, we pre-vacuum everything. According to the standard, we're supposed to pre-vacuum. Not everybody does, we do it religiously, every single job. You've had a few competitions with people that I'm vacuumed already. Let Correct. Me have a go. <laughs> <laughs> so your water-based soils, well look, water is going to be able to dissolve those soils out, but what we yeah. have is those oily soils, which mm. are difficult to get out. So we need a certain amount of chemistry. But what happens to oil when you heat it? It goes thin. Yes. So when it's thinner, it's easier to get off. It's yeah. easier to break down with your chemistry. And the more mm. heat you got, the more of those oils come off. Because I mean, just walking across a lawn or across a roadway, you get oils that you pick up, environmental oils. Yeah. You know, people say, oh, hey, you get it off grass. It's like, well, where'd you get your vegetable oil from? Your yeah. sunflower oil, your olive, olive. oils, your whatever. You, yeah, they all have some oils in them. And, and you have a look at, at roadways. You have to look at a road when it's just rained for the first time yeah. and they become slippy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you've certainly realised how much grime and, and that's oils right. yeah. just on your pavement. So that's transferring, let alone when you're yeah. cooking in your house. Yep. Uh, and the more you fry, the mm. more it goes up in the air. Yes. Okay. And that oil has got to land somewhere. And guess what? Your carpet's one of those, one of those surfaces. It's interesting. We've got friends who, and they do a lot of that hot, frying and stuff but they've actually got their outdoor kitchen there because right. they, won't, they won't do it inside, inside the house yeah. said it was destroying carpets absolutely or destroy everything not just the carpets yeah. it's this layer of 
layer of oil. Yeah. So there's some cultures that do a lot of you know mm. stir fry and, and things like that. Yeah. That um, you can always tell when you go into the homes that they've yes. been living there because there's that that unfortunate problem, and yeah. it's not through any fault of their own. It's just their, no, it's their, their way method. of cooking. Yeah. Or even if you use a you know someone that does a lot of deep frying, for instance, and there's mm. this you know stuff spilling oh, no. out all over the place. <laughs> hey, look. Yeah, you know, it's there. It's got to land somewhere. So your, your carpets are going to be what are going to are going to cop it. So someone going to get their carpets clean frame and they've got somebody in. Is there some questions they should ask the uh, the carpet cleaning professional first to make sure this guy knows what he's on about? Oh look, yeah. You know, first of all, he should be able to tell you what the Australian standard is. If he can't tell you that, we well, certainly won't know it. <laughs> he won't know what the processes are meant to be. Um, the other thing is, you can ask him what sort of system is he going to use. And it just, if he just says, "I use this system," oh, good on you, mate. But you're leaving yourself wide open for other problems if you don't understand what you're working with. Mm. Okay, as I said, we we switch and change, and sometimes we actually use them in combination with each other as well. Oh, doesn't okay. mean to say just because you've got one method, it can only be a one-trick pony. We've got several tricks up our sleeves, and it all depends on what we're working with and the result we're trying to achieve. Mm. I know when you go to a place, and you've said this before, you've gone in, and there's certain methods, you, and you're mixing your methods Mix and match. up. Absolutely. To, yep. to answer suit a circumstance. Yeah, yeah. So, look, you know, when it comes to uh, if you've got a really nasty, nasty carpet that um, you've got to get back up to a, a reasonably good standard. Yeah. Um, then I might choose to do start off with a shampoo, go do a hot water extraction and finish off with an encapsulation. Well, they all work and they all work together really beautifully. Yeah. So it's looking at the situation and what does it need. Mm. Then coming up with a formulation for that specific fiber, for that specific construction that you're working with, whether it be upholstery mm. or carpet, yep. look at the chemistry it can handle, what kind of cleaning system is best for it and go from that. So when it comes to carpet cleaning and they are expensive as I said before to maintain them apart from just your regular vacuum cleaning you know you should be doing once a week minimum absolutely um, yep yep um how often should someone get their carpets professionally cleaned have someone in to go okay let's keep them tip top okay rule of thumb 12 to 18 months right okay it really depends on how they get used and what sort of trafficking and the conditions they're mm. subjected to i mean sometimes it needs to be more than that sometimes it can be less than that yeah but in the general Consensus is 12 to 18 months is what you should be looking at. What happens, and I've had this set up to me before, when people say, look, that, that's a carpet there's a little bit cleaner because that was under our lounge, and even though the carpet cleaner's been in and cleaned, that's always going to be cleaner because that doesn't get walked on. Correct. That's always going to happen. It's not necessarily that it's cleaner. It's not abraded. Now, you think about it. If you've had a, a, an old plastic bottle that you've used dozens and dozens of times, what happens to it? Yeah, it starts getting a little scratches bit scratches and, and grungy. Yeah. Well, they're synthetic fibres in particular, and the, the problem with that, synthetic fibres when they're manufactured, they're quite shiny. They've got quite a sheen to them. Yeah. But as you're trafficking across them, they're getting all these little micro abrasions in them, and that's going to take that sheen away. So you can clean that absolutely perfectly clean. It will never look the same as the new stuff. So, that... so you cannot clean as good as new. Uh huh. So when they move the furniture, it's not because it hasn't had the sunlight on it, or because well, that's it part of it as well, because there is UV degradation as well. Yeah. But it's all to do with what it's been exposed to, whereas that one's not been exposed at all. So the bit underneath the lounge hasn't been walked back and forth with the kids Correct. and the dogs and that. So it's a little bit more protected, and Absolutely. it hasn't got all these yeah. abrasions. Yeah. 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 Okay. So it's not that it's it's just cleaner than the other, it's just less worn than the it's other. It's less worn. I mean, things age. We do. Yeah. Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Grey hairs. <laughs> oh, <laughs> At least oh, I have yeah. some. <laughs> <laughs> and I do want to touch on one thing, because I think we've got a couple of minutes left, and that is someone's had a, a, a beautiful carpet, and I've seen this, and they've had some really lovely carpet, but a bit's got damaged and I don't know, strip the colour out, they've had someone do something. Can you repair yep. carpets? Yeah, look, there's a couple of different options you can go for there. It depends mm. on what's happened. Mm. Uh, sometimes if it's just a stain on there, we might be able to do a stain treatment that will be able to get rid of that. Now, it's not cleaning, and that's the thing you've got to understand. Yes. You get to call someone in to clean a carpet, and you, the stain is still there. You've got a clean stain. If there's been a chemical change <laughs> on the fiber. Well, you know, yeah. at the end of it, it can't clean it anymore. It's clean. It's, it's perfectly clean. clean. It's a different color now, but it's clean. Uh, yeah, okay, so yeah. we now have to see if we can break that discoloration down somehow and safely yes. to get it off the fiber. 
but that's not always possible because sometimes these artificial dyes in particular mm. can be more tenacious or even some of the, uh, the natural dyes like curries can be more tenacious than the original dyes. So no. what happens? We take the colour of the carpet out as well. As well. Which then we can recolour. We've got the ability to do that, which not a lot of people do. No, you actually, and, and in your firm, you actually brought somebody in, didn't you, to do an actual proper colour dyeing course? Yeah, think, yeah. Look, I've been doing it myself since oh, 1994. Mm. So got a fair bit of experience with it. Uh, Will you still bring other people in to see how you can Because there's out? always new technologies being developed. Yeah. There's new ways of doing it. And just because I've done it since 1994, do I know the best way? No, not necessarily. It turns out mine was still pretty good, but you know, <laughs> I still want to learn and, and find out what there is. So yeah. this guy had a reputation of being you know, the, 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 the duck scuts, if you want to put it that way, yep. uh, as far as that sort of thing went. And he also did a lot of um, uh, other little bits and pieces as well, which I, I wanted to get to get a look at too, to see whether mm. it's going to be fitting, a, a good fit for, uh, for my own business. Um, so yeah, I've got him to come over to WA and you know, he, uh, he did that with a, a few other guys as well. Yep. There was only a handful of us and I think there's only probably two or three of us left that are still doing it because a lot of people just can't get their head around it. Yeah, and colour matching's a bit of a, a, bit a of skill. Art. Yeah, a bit of an art. It's a bit like painters. I had a painter friend of mine and he could colour match. If you show him a, and you don't know what colour's on your wall, yep. he can match it and it's like, I don't know. And I try it and it's always a different shade and it's right. not quite yeah. there. But he just seems to have that. A bit like you with carpet. You look and other people go, I just can't. But you do it and people go, it's, yep. it's done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, every colour is just a mix of three primary colours. Easy as that. You got your red, you got your yellow, you got your blue. You just mix those up in certain ratios to get whichever colour you need. And that's exactly how painters do it. Exactly. Yeah, it, I mean, the artist painters, they'll yes. tell you there are three basic colours that they use all that's it. the time. Yep. Yeah. That's so that's, that's all we've got. We've got three basic colours that we work with. Yeah. And then we can actually go to whatever we need to go to and blend colours in. So apart from you being able to do all the different types of, of cleaning and being able to mix and match then, you can repair carpet, you can do upholstery and you can do tiles as Correct. well. Correct. So if any cleaning, what's the best way of contact? Any of you going, I was just about to book someone, maybe they should have a chat Yeah, to don't book first. them, book us, we'll, yeah. be, we'll be able to take care of it. <laughs> <laughs> so it? yeah, Fresh Air Carpet Cleaning, we're contactable on 949-33880, that's our landline, um, 0418-914-097 for the mobile, or you can just do a, an email contact, info at facc.com.au, We've also got a contact form on the webpage of facc.com.au or go to our Facebook page, Fresh Air Carpet Cleaning. It's Fresh Air, A-I-R-E, Carpet Cleaning on Facebook. You can get us through that. One way or the other, we'll get there.